Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my favorite books of 2020 video. And for that reason, I wore like some of my favorite things like my Virgo necklace um, and then like my favorite go-to makeup look. <laughs> In 2020, I read like quite a few books that I thought were highly rated and I decided to condense that. I only had 10 five-star ratings and a bunch of four stars. So I decided to talk about the 10 five stars and um, I'll include the honorary mentions at the end. I have just about five or six of them, uh, but yeah. So on 10th place, we have Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. This is just a quick, fast read. It's a story about a woman and a little boy who is talking to her as she's in a coma in the hospital. They have this back and forth conversation, or at least that's how the book is told, where he's asking her questions and he wants her to answer them. The whole reason behind this is because he wants her to figure out the story of how she got there and who he is to her. And I thought it was just interesting. I read this so fast because I couldn't put it down. I know a lot of people think it's like this like scary story, but I didn't think so at all. I thought it was just a really good book. I don't even know how to explain it, but once I read it, I wanted to tell everyone about it. It's in 10th place because it's very short and I feel like I wanted to save the spot or the other spots for longer books. So the next book that I have here is called My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Atessa Moshfeg. This book is so good. Like, <laughs> I don't even know how to explain how good this book is. But basically we follow a woman, I think she's in her 20s, and her plan for happiness is to take a year off and do absolutely nothing. She plans on just staying in her little like expensive New York apartment, um, just kind of like indulging in whatever she wants. But mo mainly she thinks that by sleeping, that would be the most beneficial way to go about this. So she finds this psychologist, or I guess the psychiatrist, because the lady's prescribing medication. Um, she finds a psychiatrist who is very much the hippie-ish type of woman who is willingly, dis uh, willingly prescribing her these medications um, with no, it seems like no real reason. She's just kind of taking the narrator's word for it and saying like, oh, okay, if you don't think that sleeping pill is working, we're gonna try these and mix all of these different things. So from there, we just kind of like <laughs> follow her taking pills. Also another thing that's really important is that this book takes place in in New York in 2000 and she has this friend who constantly checks in on her who is really just willing to put up with her shit because she is not like a nice person to her at all that girl did not deserve that even though she was annoying but yes this book was just really good and I I want to say it talks about really important topics, but it doesn't. It's just like a wild ride. It's fun. So the next book that I have here is called Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This is a book that I feel like I've been talking about for like a month, but I just love it. Pachinko is a generational story that follows this Korean family from right before World War II on, I think it ends at 1990, but during that time, we see how the Koreans were affected by World War II and, you know, just what they had to do to kind of stay alive. I just thought that the storylines of how we went through the generations was really interesting. And I just love the main character, I guess the, the great, great, great grandmother, because we see her storyline from the beginning to like pretty much the end. And I just thought that that was just a really cool story. And I regret putting off this book for so long because it had been sitting back there for like a year and a half. So the next book here is called Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. This book is just a quick book that is kind of relationship based. It's very much relatable to I feel like anyone in their 20s who is kind of just trying to maneuver life and relationships. So in this book, we follow an Irish woman named Ava who is working abroad as an English teacher where she meets a man who's a investment banker named Julian and they form this um, situationship. <laughs> I feel like that's the best word to describe their relationship. Julian doesn't really want a relationship 
and Ava doesn't really know what she wants in life. She doesn't even know if she necessarily wants a committed relationship with him either. We kind of see their life and how kind of dysfunctional they are with each other. It is kind of quirky and Ava has a lot of inner thoughts that we get to see and the way that she kind of questions things and does certain things is very interesting to me and I thought that a lot of times it was funny. There were parts that I thought were a bit dry like some of her teaching sections but <laughs> all in all I liked when she was engaging in conversations with Jillian. At some point in this book, Ava gets into a relationship with Edith and Edith is completely different from Jillian because she was willing to get into a rela committed relationship with Ava much quicker than Jillian. She wasn't really giving off mixed signals or not as mixed as Jillian and was just like the whole deal or the whole package that Ava wanted or at least she thinks that she wants. This book is told in three parts. The first part is Julian, second part is Edith, and the third part is Edith and Julian. And we just get to see all the weird thoughts and things that I'm sure most of us have done or thought about and I feel like it definitely touches on being in your 20s and trying to figure out re relationships and what you want in life. So the next book that I have here is called Friends and Strangers by J. Courtney Sullivan. This was such a good read. It is quite long, but it makes sense because we are diving into the two main characters that we have in this book, which is Elizabeth, who is a married woman with a kid that moves to upstate New York, and Sam, who is attending the local women's college. Elizabeth hires Sam to be a babysitter for her son, and we just kind of see how their friendship starts and just kind of like the conversations that they have with each other. But she soon starts finding herself at home and befriends Sam. They start having these conversations about their lives because their two lives are so different from each other. Elizabeth is quite wealthy. She has a lot of money and even if she didn't have the money from her books her parents are extremely wealthy so she's pretty well off whereas Sam is coming from a huge family she's her family doesn't really make that much money also Sam dorms with like some other wealthy kids so she kind of feels out of place but with Elizabeth she kind of finds comfort there because she doesn't feel like she she's not being compared to anyone. We get to see both of their lives because the book switches between Sam and Elizabeth and there's a lot of things that happen in this book that we know before the other person might know because it happens in Sam's part or Elizabeth's part. I guess it just really touches on class and privilege. Those were kind of the two main topics that we see in this story. So the next book that I have here is called The Discomfort of Evening by Mariaki Lucas Renyeveld and this book is kind of sad and disturbing. We start the book out with the family finding out that their eldest son had just died while ice skating and we follow them through the next couple of months where we are focused mainly on Jazz, who I think is the second to youngest child. She was begging to go ice skating with her brother and she feels like she's at fault, even though she doesn't really have a reason to feel like that. And we just see like all the sadness and weird stuff that her family gets into because <laughs> a lot of it is pretty weird and uncomfortable to, to read at times. But all in all, I thought it was a pretty good book. It was written very well and it is a translation from Sweden. So I don't know. Translated books just seem to be super good. So the next book that I have here is called Severance by Ling Ma and this is just a I want to say dystopian but if something similar is happening right now is it actually considered <laughs> dystopian? It is a story about a pandemic called Shen Fever that is kind of moving around the world so everyone is essentially going to die and we follow Candace Chen who is in the midst of trying to find like a safe place where Shen fever won't like affect this small group that she's traveling with and pre-pandemic so we get to see her life before all of this started. I thought that this story was very interesting and 
ideally you probably don't want to read it in a pandemic but I thought the writing was really good it was engaging I wanted to read it again after I finished but I wanted to get to other books so yeah this is Severance by Ling Ma the next book that I have here is called we Are All Completely Besides Ourselves by Karen Joy Foiler. We start out this book in 1996 where we are following Rosemary as she's in her fifth year of college. Um, she doesn't really want to be in college so she's not really taking it very seriously or you know she doesn't really do anything. But she's telling us the story about her sister who disappeared and then her brother who also decided to run away from the family. All in all the family is very strange. They have a psychologist um father i believe he's a psychologist or psychiatrist but he does like experiments and you know things that psychologists used to get away with back in the day basically her sister affected her so much that when she disappeared nothing was ever the same with anyone in her family her sister fern was just a big part of the family ideally it hit her more than anyone else because you know they were twins i feel like this book reminded me of the idiot or rosemary reminded me of the character in the book the idiot by i think it is it elif batman i think that's her name so if you didn't like that book you definitely won't enjoy this one but if you want a book that is mm, i really don't know how to say it because if you're not into psychology i feel like you won't really enjoy a lot of this book yeah i enjoyed it i loved it i thought it was great and i feel like it deserves its spot up here and i can't wait to read it again so in number two i have girl woman other by bernadine evaristo and this book i've talked about a lot like <laughs> just like pachinko this book was so good i love the concept of having like 12 different stories by 12 different women and just their various relationships to each other. The writing style is not the typical one that you would see in novels. There are no periods. It's kind of looks like poetry if you gave it a quick glance, although some stories are written more like full out. It is definitely not as like, I wouldn't say it's like lyrical, like something Toni Morrison would write, but it was so beautiful i would say the first story is very hard to get into i thought i wouldn't like it after that one but once you start going through the stories each of them just get better and better and i thought that we just had many different storylines running from various black women who had different stories to tell i just thought like hearing about like the mothers especially in this book was was something that I feel like we don't really get to see in a lot of stories, but especially in real life. I think like with immigrant women, especially immigrant black women, a lot of them don't really tell their stories to their children. So seeing some of these stories in this book just made me want to, or I guess made me kind of feel sorry because I feel like we tend to give our parents a hard time and <laughs> sometimes their stories, you know, they have a lot more to them than we think and I feel like this book does a good job of showing us that. I just I just loved it and I think that anyone will like it as well. I just can't stop talking about this book. So yeah, uh, read it. The last and final book, you guys shouldn't even be surprised, <laughs> is Normal People by Sally Rooney. If I read Conversations with Friends last year, that book would have beat this one by just a little bit. So this story takes place in Ireland and we follow Marianne and Connell and their relationship from the age of like 17, I want to say, into their 20s. This story isn't told through each year. We kind of just jump around and sometimes we'll get to like parts that take place in a year but most of the time it's like every year we'll get a different story we kind of get to see their dynamic because they kind of deal with a bunch of miscommunication that affects them in very important ways that would change their life like together i would say their relationship is something that i feel like we can all relate to i feel like we can all see ourselves in like marianne or in connell and just like our anxieties and thoughts and how we 
feel about ourselves and kind of how we feel like other per people perceive us. So this book kind of tackles all of that. And there are a lot of parts in this book that I just found sad because I related to a lot of the miscommunications or like it not being the right time to be together and certain stuff like that. And I just, just, I don't know. I think the book is so high up on this list because of how relatable it was for me and the emotional connection I had with it. But yes, I believe Normal People is really good and Sally Rooney is just someone that I will pick up a book from anytime. So I have a few honorary mentions here that I won't really go into, but these were definitely top contenders for the top 10 books that I have here. And it is The Death of Vivek Oji by Akwekwe Mezi, His Only Wife by Peace Edsel Mehdi, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, The Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne, A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara, and Duck's Newberry Port by Lucy Elvin. I have talked about all of these books in another video, so if you wanna go see them, you could see me talk about them. The only one I don't have a video on is probably A Little Life because I read that at the beginning before I started YouTube or like booktube. There are so many videos out about this book, so you don't really need to hear my opinion on it. I would say that I didn't cry when I read this book because I just found it too numbing, I feel, to handle that much emotion so um there's that anyway that is all of my favorite books for 2020 and i am so happy that i read these books last year let me know if there is a book on here that you read and loved as well also let me know what your favorite book is i'm always looking for recommendations so if there's like a literary fiction or contemporary novel that you guys have read and love that focuses on like relationships or we get like a deep dive into a character that we follow for the entire book let me know i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys soon Too many words.